Rub up your engines! All right, today we have a classic, if you want to call it a classic. It's a 2005 Pontiac Bonneville, and you can see it's been through the washing machine, but what's left of it? Well, you can see the paint kind of <laughs> came off the plastic, and the ex-father-in-law smashed it up. <laughs> it's an inherited car, and we'll take a look inside. Move the seat back. All right, we'll see what kind of mileage this thing's got on it. We'll start her up. Starts right up. Got all kinds of lights on. See, the interior is kind of worse for wear. Typical low jam quality. And of course, the roof line is completely gone. We've got the foam here. That's all that's left. And as we can see here, it's got 194,354 miles on it. Obviously, there's a problem with the ABS system. And in this case, it's running a little bit off. At least it's a 2005. So we're going to put our scan tool and see what's going on with the engine. It does have a regular OBD port here, so I can use my fancy Autel Maxisys. And I can pretty much imagine it's gonna have a bunch of codes on it. It's a GM product, 2000s, not their greatest time. It read it instantly, so with the standalone diagnosis, coding the VIN, knows it's an 05, 3.8 V6, even do a topology scan. So, here we go. And while that's doing it, we'll look around. Well, the power windows still work. Automatic transmission, we'll check it out when we take it for a road test. Make sure the top's gone, but hey, it was a free car. 58%, it's got five trouble codes. The seats are still pretty comfy. Even back then, they were pretty comfy seats there. And since they're the fabric, they do hold up better. Leather didn't work out too well. Really, all things considered, how it looks, uh, it's got six trouble codes now. The ABS system, which we figured had a problem anyways because the light was on. Well, codes exist for the ABS. You don't expect ABS to work on something like this anyways. The rear speed sensor and or the wiring's bad. Ah, eh, you never expect the ABS to work that well on these old things anyways. The hard codes, they stayed on even though you erased them. So, ah, they don't really care about that. So, we'll check the next two codes. Rear integration module. That will control exhaust valve circuit. So, ah, uh, who cares? It's another thing. These, these fancy computer stuff. They're not going to work on an old GM. We really don't care. We'll erase the codes. See if they come back. We'll see if it's a hard code or a soft code. Okay, well, that was a soft code because it seems to have erased it. We'll find out in a second. So it didn't come back, so that's a soft code. Well, no, it did come back. It's a hard code, too. All right, and the last code is down here. Digital radio receiver. Well, it's not the original one, so of course you're going to get data and codes because it isn't the original radio and GM's notorious they put aftermarkets. Class 2 data link malfunction. You put in a different radio, it messes with them, so who cares about that? She's worried more about running problems. So what we're going to do is go to powertrain. We'll go to live data. We'll start it up. What kinds of data? We'll start analyzing the engine data. See what kind of shape it's in. Okay. This is a 3.8 liter engine, but the mass airflow sensors showing 6.3 6.4 maybe four tops so the mass airflow sensor it's worn which is typical the map sensor is normal interesting the short term fuel trim it's subtracting fuel and the long term it's adding fuel but when you add them together in that case it's only one and then sometimes it's three and now it's one you add them together to see what the total is and that's not bad for an old clunker like this relays working engine data two again the mass airflow sensor on two it's still a little high. Should be more around four. It's the 3.8 liter engine. Long term is three. That's not bad for an old car. It's, it's totally acceptable. Needs an oil change. Oil life remaining zero. You know, maybe somebody didn't even reset it when they changed the oil. This did have one of those systems even back then. Tell you when to change the oil. And they're not that accurate either. Look at some transmission live data. Here we go. See if anything's squirrely. It's all black. None of it's red. So none of it's bad so far. For its age, it's actually not bad at all. So under the hood this is a 3800 v6 these are actually extremely dependable engines now as for the struts they are so we got a little stick to hold that on <laughs> but you can see it's still going pretty smooth and the data isn't bad for the engine or the transmission now they got a problem that sometimes it doesn't start all that well but there's no codes there's no problems that's off an old age, so when they leave, I'm gonna give them a bottle of Bernie's fuel cleaner, we'll put it in the gas tank, they can fill it up with gas. And that cleaner may fix the whole problem. It's probably because it doesn't get enough fuel when it's cold, and Bernie's cleaner will work that quite well. Now, if Bernie's cleaner didn't fix it, then it would be time for a new fuel pump. 
meaning the fuel pump wouldn't start up first thing in the morning and spray enough fuel. That's common too, but a lot of times cleaning will fix. Company, of course, it's too old, there's no backup camera, so that we won't worry about. Now realize, at one point in time, this was a luxury vehicle, and we'll see how it still rides. Hey, it's still pretty smooth. They're not race cars, but they're not particularly slow. And listen to this. There, you hear that little hum? Well, the hum is just, the wheel bearings in the front are a little bit worn, no surprising. They have about 200,000 miles on them, a little louder, a little quieter. So the left front one's worn more than the right front one, but let me warn you this. If you put a left front wheel bearing on this, then you would notice the right front one more <laughs> because it's quieter than the left, but it's still making a little noise. That's how I always warn people. You change one wheel bearing and then you say, that didn't fix it. The noise is still there. Often you did fix the one side, but not the other because wheel bearings pretty much wear evenly. They both have 200,000 miles practically on them, but it's not big, that's not a deal breaker. It can still be a decent car for driving around. I can feel a little shudder between first and second. Second gear is the acceleration gear. It's the first one to wear out. So no surprise, the transmission is wearing some with that little shudder between first and second. That's how these start to go. That's what generally finishes these cars off. When the transmission goes, most people don't want to spend thousands of dollars so they get rid of them. Now, we'll see what happens in the drag strip here. It's picking up. Now see, the other shifts are good. Second to third, third to fourth, those shifts are perfectly fine. It's always second gear that breaks first. And if you baby them, heck, I had an Opal, second gear was going on. I babied it for six years, sold it to a guy, then he babied it, then he sold it to another guy. But it was only 50 bucks in the end, so what do you think you're gonna get for 50 bucks? <laughs> Okay, she got the car for nothing. Yeah, it's got a big bash inside. Interior has all gone on the roof, but it still runs pretty good, yes. It has a little jiggle going into second gear. That's one. Baby it from first to second, then you can drive it as much as you want. Didn't have any problems with that. They do have a problem that sometimes, first thing in the morning, or if they drive and then come to a stop, that it stalls out. So I'm getting some of Bernie's cleaner. All right, here comes Bernie's cleaner. ATS chemical. Take the little funnel in. Break a little hole in it. And away we go. Pour the whole thing in. It smells like turpentine, but it sure works. And that's it. Give them two, 300 miles, see what happens. If it stops stalling, great, it fixed it. Now, if it's not that, knowing these things, it would be the fuel pump on the beginning of going out because fuel pumps have to put out so much pressure. When you're going real fast, it can be off a little, but when you're going slow, if it's not going enough pressure, it'll conk out. So the computer can't trip a code. It's conked out a couple of times, coming off the highway, coming to a stop, die, and start it up again. If it was a more modern car, my machine would have gotten a code for low fuel pressure. So it could be the fuel pump is starting to go out, but it went good going 60 miles an hour so it's working now and if it doesn't do it anymore the cleaner fixed it. if it doesn't probably time for a fuel pump but unfortunately this is an in-between car it's not old enough that it has a mechanical pump that takes five minutes to change in the front it's got it inside the gas tank and you don't want to do it on a gas if the fuel pump does go out eventually you'll try to start the car it will not start then you spray starting fluid it starts and dies voila then you put on a fuel pump because I've seen cars go like this for years finally the fuel pump goes but years later and let's face the facts a car that looks like this with a big bash on it you're probably not going to want to drive it too many years so there you have it a 3800 v6 one of the best engines gm ever made in an old luxury car that still runs like a luxury car other than shipped on a little in second gear hey it served 192,000 miles see how much longer it lasts maybe it's going to need a fuel pump but as a whole it's still a pretty solid car and here's some bonus questions and answers. Michael C. says, I got an 09 Honda CRV. Spongy brake pedal goes down a few inches before the engage. Fluid's full, no leak. Should I try a brake leak? Well, you can try, but if the system has never been worked on and opened up, the only way you can get air in the system to make them spongy is that there's a leak somewhere and you'd have to fix the leak, right? So go ahead, but it probably won't fix anything. On those, more often when they start to get spongy, if you look at all the wheels and there's no fluid leaking, 
and it's all bone dry, check the brake pads, make sure they're still thick, if everything's still thick, then odds are your brake master cylinder is starting to wear. Now, if it only goes a little bit and then stops fine, people can drive it that way for years, but let's say you're coming to a stop, you're holding it on, and then it keeps sinking all the way to the floor, then that's dangerous. Eventually, you might lose all braking power, so in that case, change the brake master cylinder, because that's the only thing that can leak inside itself. You won't see any fluid, you won't lose fluid, but it's like a heart murmur, it leaks inside itself, so it'll get spongy, and you won't ever see anything. In that case, put on another brake master cylinder. It's, what, 09? So, it's getting to be an older car. It's, what, uh, 15 years old? Probably time for a brake master cylinder. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.